uh, I want us to take a look at the similarities and otherwise between President William Ruto's move to dissolve his cabinet and the path that the country's third president, the late Mwai Kibaki, took when he fired all his ministers and their assistants in 2005. Now, just like his predecessor, whose loss in the 2005 constitutional referendum was interpreted as a vote of no confidence in his government, President Ruto has also been under pressure to defend his administration's performance as a section of the electorate escalated their expression of displeasure with his government. Let's take a look at this report put together by Serfin Aching Oma. After suffering a humiliating defeat in the constitutional referendum on 21st November 2005, the late Mwai Kibaki's firm grip on government seemed to have loosened. The overwhelming no vote galvanized Kenyans' disappointment with Kibaki's leadership three years after he took power. This completed the split in his National Rainbow Coalition government, NAC, which was made up of the National Alliance Party of Kenya and the Liberal Democratic Party, a sharp split between Raila Odinga's wing, which was campaigning against the constitution, and Kibaki's wing, which lost its push to support the constitution. 57% of voters rejected a draft constitution Kibaki had championed, while only 43% supported it. The vote, having been interpreted as a vote of no confidence in Kibaki's government, forced a tough decision from the country's third president, who fired all his ministers and their assistants in 2005, except the then Vice President Moody Awori and the then Attorney General Amos Wako. Following the results of the referendum, it has become necessary for me as the President of the Republic to reorganize my government to make it more cohesive and better able to serve the people of Kenya. Accordingly, in accordance with the powers conferred upon me under the Constitution of Kenya, I have directed that the offices of all ministers and all assistant ministers become vacant. Consequently, the occupants of the said offices cease to hold their respective offices with the immediate effect. Nineteen years later, the Kibaki script played out as President William Ruto dissolved his entire cabinet Thursday afternoon. But in comparison to Kibaki's short and tough statement, Ruto's statement was long. In 11 minutes and 25 seconds, the head of state read 17 paragraphs, part of which was not just the justifications for his decision, but also an attempt to defend the government records this far. Even with the progress we have made, I am acutely aware that the people of Kenya have very high expectations of me. And they believe that this administration can undertake the most extensive transformation in our nation's history. Kibaki fired a total of 40 ministers, while Ruto fired 21 cabinet secretaries, including the attorney general. The key difference being the constitutional dispensations. At the time of dismissal by Kibaki, the president enjoyed the ultimate power to hire and fire at will. But for President Ruto, terms and conditions apply. Safin Acheng Oma, Citizen TV.